Okay, there's got to be a better way to hold this thing steady so it's consistent. Let me show you how. Hi everyone, welcome back to the 4x4 Fab Shop. And today we're going to take a digital protractor and make a very simple setup gauge and rotation gauge. So if you're building something, you can clamp it on and see what your angle is. Or if you're bending tube and you make a bend and you need to rotate so you can figure out what that angle is real easy. And most of this can be built out of scrap. We're going to make, make it so that it will go up to 2 inch. Primarily tube. It's a simple little digital protractor you can buy at Lowe's. The nice thing about these is you can set them on there and zero it. So even if it is at a big angle, you zero it, well that's the new zero. And you rotate from there. And we got some plate we're going to cut the body out of. And we have some basic hardware tools you can go buy. Handles. We'll spend five or ten dollars at Lowe's. You can drill and tap or you can just weld on some of these uh, larger nuts. Small piece of all thread. And then got a couple options for feet so that when you clamp it on you don't mark it. All right, so let's lay it out, get it cut, and get this project finished. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you like this type of content. So we're gonna take, so we're gonna take this piece of plate that we got, and we've made multiple things out of it, as you can tell. We're just gonna start by just squaring it off a little bit, just so we can. Just so we have a base to start from. Okay, so it's almost three inches, so that'll work. So we have our two inch piece around here. And the idea of this is when this clamps on, you can put your angle finder here. If you got to rotate it here or here, either way. We just got some small scraps that we'll cut, that we'll make the, the V's out of, and a couple little pads for the angle finder. And then these little coupling nuts will work out great. We'll just take these and just tack these on, so that when our piece of all thread goes in, it'll just hold it. I'd like this back strap here to be at least three quarters of an inch. I'm going to come up a half inch. So you could just rough sketch this whole thing. Now you can buy these things for 75 to 100 bucks. So there's enough scrap laying around. That we could just do it here. Alright, so that'll go there. That'll sit in that V. So then the nut will be here. So we'll have an opening. We'll have to get this in there. So we'll just take our two inch piece. It'll have to be clear to this point. Three quarters of an inch, so we'll just make this three quarters of an inch. So we're going to cut this section out. We'll come up and around here. We'll end up rounding this corner off. And if you want to make it easier to see, so you don't cut the wrong lines. Because this, we could, you could very easily cut this. If you have a bandsaw, you could do all this as well. I think what we'll do is we use a friction wheel. We'll cut here. We'll cut, we'll cut. And then we can use the plasma to uh, cut this little section out right here.
Okay, so there's the rough shape. Now we'll drop in with the plasma and cut this profile out. Alright, for this we're going to use our Cutmaster 40 plasma cutter. Do a cleanup. You get into it a little bit with the plasma cutter, but we'll work around it. We just give it a, a little brush over with the 120 flap wheel. And if any of the braces we use, all comes from uh, Rock Mount, we're an affiliate. So any of the cutoff wheels, the abrasives right down to the welding wire. The link's in our descriptions. Check them out, check them out, and uh, let them know where you've seen it. All right, so we're gonna cut two pieces here for the V. Got a couple pieces of scrap. So we're gonna cut two pieces. Let's see, that one's an inch and a half. So let's get this one cut first, and we'll cut the other one. So we just did a cleanup on that piece with this 120 grit rock mount flap disc. I keep in mind this gauge doesn't hold a lot of weight. You really just need to stay in position while you're moving tube. We get these two in here, and then we can sand that edge, and then we're going to fill this in as well where we cut a little too far. Just we'll just tack on a strip here and a strip here so you can put the gauge on either side. So one will go here, and one will go here, and that'll allow the gauge to stick on, stick on here. And what that'll do is so that if I got to rotate one way, or if I got to go the other, I can stick it on either side. If I had to, I can always stick it on here as well. All right, so let's get this mill scale off off of one side on these. Let's get this mill scale off and start getting this all tacked together. Now you can use MIG, you can use TIG. It's up to you. I know there's a good chance it's going to pull from that side. You want to put the put do the best job you can. But you also want to put more work into it than you need to. We used a one to three block to square this up.
All right, I'm going to make this piece longer. I want to get rid of this gap. So we're going to make this piece a little bit longer. And so we're going to set this one in there. And I'll just mark it where to cut it. Cut it. Get that off of there. And then, so I don't want that gap in there. Okay, got a new piece cut. That one will stick down in that little corner. We'll clamp this, this piece on. There we go. All right, let's get that tacked in place. Right, I'm going to scotch break that and we'll get the back side packed too. Should have scotch brighted that before I even put it on there. Alright, so we got that piece in. We got the nut tacked in place. And, well, let's, let's get it welded up. So after that we sanded it, got it all cleaned up and threw a quick coat of paint on it. Alright, so let's take some of our parts, get this thing together. We'll cinch this down in the handle. So we'll figure out roughly how long the screw needs to be. Alright, with that it's shorter. And you may or may not have to chase the threads down inside of this. We had to a little bit. So the acorn nut just keeps it from chewing that up. 
and just tighten both at one time. And then, you know, this would just go in there. It snugs out on the pipe. And you would just take your magnetic protractor and it can go there, it can go on this side, it can go on it, whichever way. So if I have to clock this tube later, I can put this on it. doesn't really matter where. I can just set this on there, zero it. And then when the bend is done, so if I need this to be at 90 or something other than that, just rotate it till it's at 90, then just lock your tube down and then make your next bend. And if you put this at the end of your pipe, you can make all your bends and they would all track you and have to keep taking this on and off. All right, this is a short piece of scrap because right now tubing is kind of in a high demand. All right, so I hope you like little projects like this. It's a nice little project. I need to do more TIG welding as well. You know, I'm not laying right now the nice stack of dimes either. You always need practice. And, you know, this is my, isn't my full-time job, so it's always good to have more practice. But little things like this made out of scrap. I've got maybe 5 or $10 in hardware. If you have that around as well, I just thought the handle was a nice touch. The digital protractors, they run, depending where you get them, 10 to $30. Just make sure you can zero it at any angle. But they really make a nice setup tool as well. So if you're building something on your vehicle, you can clamp it on. And this will also work on square just as well. So you can clamp this on about anything. It can be round, it can be square. It doesn't matter. It's one of the reasons why I use two pieces for the V. So we don't have a big radius in the bottom from a piece of angle. If all you're going to do is tube, use a piece of angle here. It'd be just fine. I wanted the square bottom on it. So hope you enjoy projects like this. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and what they say, click the bell too. So that's been another edition of 4x4 Fab Shop. I'll see you in some of these other videos that pop up here for either some kind of welding or tube fabrication. So until then... This has been the 4x4 Fab Shop. See you in the next build.